All right, guys. So let's do an example. So let's cut everything short and let's do an example. All right. So we know these are just pre-round transformation. So let's calculate W4. All right. So let's learn how to calculate W4. So in order for me to calculate W4, so I is equals to 4. So I need to find some T value, which we have learned in previous uh, video. I is equals to 4. So 4 mod 4 is 0. So I'm going to use this condition. So W4 is going to be XOR with T, XOR with WI minus 4, which is W0. All right. So far, so good. Okay. So let's calculate T. So because I need to, because I'm taking I, so I'm doing this. I'm taking I is equals to V4 and is equals to 4. So I'm, I need to calculate T. Okay. So what is the definition of T? T is quite simple. T is subword, rotate word. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to write this here. So I'm calculating T4 here. So I'm going to simply write subword. Then there is a parenthesis. Rotate word. All right. What is the value of I? Is 4. 4 minus 1. So I'm going to write it like this. WI uh, 4 minus 1 is equals to 3. XOR with R con. What is the value of I, guys? I is 4. 4 divided by 4, that would give me 1. All right? So far, so good. So far, so good. So uh, we're going to follow the uh, order of operation. Whatever is in the parentheses, I have to do it first. So what is the value of uh, W3? W3 is right here. This is the value of W3. W3 is just these last, uh, these four bytes. They are just coming in. All right, so I'm going to take these W3, which is going to be K12, K13, K14, and K15. So I'm just going to take these values. So I'm going to take these values. I'm going to write them here. 13, without rotating it. 13, AA, 5, 4, 8, 7. And I'm going to rotate them. All right? All right? So in place of WI minus 3, which is 4 minus 1, which is W3, I just simply pick up these values, which are right here, W3 values. And I'm going to rotate them. Once I rotate them, this would, rotating means what? Shifting an entire left byte. This, this byte needs to be shifted left. So when I shift these two byte, which means this is an hexadecimal number, which is a 4-bit number. So this is an entire byte. When I shift them, so after rotating, this would become, so when I rotate this, this will go out, go here, then this will shift, and then it will go after this. Then I'll have, after rotation, I'll have AA5487, then this will go 1, and then this will go 3. This, this is after rotating it. Then I need to take subword of it to find the value of t4 i need to take subword okay in order for me to take subword of it i don't need to go through that mathematical process we have learned that already i'm going to use my handy table which is right here sub my table so the first letter is what a a all right so the first transformation that we're doing is actually a a a a all right, so how do I actually navigate through this? So we're doing the first transformation AA. So we're going to go A here all the way up to A here. So I'm going to take this and here's a cross. So this AA, according to this table, would become what? This and this AA would become AC. So I'm going to, after this, this would become AC. What about 5, 4? So I have 5 and then I have 4 right here. 5, 5 is my column, I mean row, and my column is uh, 5, 4. So 5 and 4, that would become 20. 
what about 8 7 this is 8 and this is all the way up to 7 that would become 17 all right 17 8 7 would become 17 what about 13 1 and 3 1 is my uh, row and 3 is my column 13 would become 70 all right so first what we have done we have taken w3 we rotated that that would become aa548713 then we took a sub word of it which means using s box table we have transformed this and now i need to xor it with something called rcon where i have i is 4 so 4 divided by 4 is 1 1 all right so let's xor this Okay, where is my archon? Let's look at my archon table, which is right here. All right, look at my archon table. Let me shift this a little bit so you can see this. All right, so archon is one, so I'm going to use it for round one. All right, and this is the value which is part of the standard. So I'm just going to simply bring this value in. So this is, I'm going to XOR them together. So what is my Archon value? Is AC 20177D. Oh, sorry. 1777D. I'm going to XOR it with this value. So I'm just going to simply pick up this as is. Where I have least most significant bit, I'm going to put it underneath. Most significant bit, then 1, then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I'm going to XOR them. All right. Once I XOR them, anything XOR with 0, I will get D. Here was 7, 7, 1, 0, 2. All right. So how do I XOR numbers? Uh, you can sh convert them into bits and then XOR them. I also have a handy table for this. Here's, here's the handy table, XOR table. I'll make a website and I'll put all of these stuff on my website soon. So the way we're going to do it is C, what is on top? C, I'm XORing C with 1. So I'm just going to simply go here, which is C and 1. C and 1. So what is the value when I XOR C and 1? I have a table that is D. So I'm just going to simply replace that with D. Anything XOR with 0, I'll get the same number back. So this is going to be the value of my T4. All right. So far, so good. So we're using this example. What we just calculated is the value of T4 right here. And we're going to XOR this value with W0. And how do we know this? This is how we're going to do it. Okay. So this, I'm going to XOR it right here. According to this definition, once I calculated my T, what do I need to do? Well, I have computed my T. T needs to be XOR with W0, and W0 is this value. So I'm going to bring in my T. So this is my T4. I'm going to XOR it with my W0. So far, so good, guys, because this is the most important part. After that is just XORing these hexadecimal numbers. So I'm just going to simply pick up this W0 value starting from the most significant bit in these four bytes which is two four i'm going to simply write them here two four seven five a two i hope you guys are seeing it 70 is b3 that's it guys is that simple so once i do that i'm just going to simply bring my handy table in which is an xor table which is quite nice uh okay d3 D is right here and 3 is right here. So that would become E. All right. Then I have 7B. I have 7 and all the way up to B, which is right here. So 7B is C. What about 7 2? 7 is on the top. So 7 is on the top. 7 will go in a, uh, in a row section and then bottom is 2 so this is going to be 5 what about 1a 1 is right here 
and A is all the way here. So this would become B. Any number XORing with 0, 5, let's just do it. 0, 5, I'll get 5. 2, 7. So let's go to my table. I have 2 and I have 7. That is 5. 2, 7 is 5. D4. D is right here. And 4 is right here. That would become 9. And A2. A and 2 is 8. A2 is 8. So... So now let's go let's go back to our diagram. So when I X source, what we have computed is actually T4 using this. T4 XORing with W0 would become your W4 according to this definition, guys. And that is what? 8, 9. So this is your W4. Alright, so this would become what? 8, 9, 5, 5, B5, C, E. This is an hexadecimal number. Now, let's do, let, let me do one more example. Let me do one more example. I don't want to make these videos long. I think you guys are getting bored, but I'm just going to do it anyhow. So I, let's, let's do another example. Let's do I is equals to 5. So W5, based on this definition, 5 mod 4 is not 0. It's not 0. So 5 mod, 5, 5 mod 4 is not 0, something other than 0. Then it's going to be W5 is going to be... 5 minus 1, which is going to be 4, okay, XOR with W1. Why? 5 minus 4 is 1. So let's look at the diagram. This is exactly what's going on. W4 is being XOR with W1. So I don't need this diagram. All I need to know is these two conditions and the definition of T. That's it. So let's calculate one of these numbers. So our W5 is actually... W4 being XORed according to the diagram and as per our definition of these two conditions is W1. Alright, so let's pick up our W4. W4 is 8, 9, 5, 5, B, 5, C, E. Alright, then so this is my W4 which is being XOR with W1, which is W1 is, I'm going to pick up the values starting from the most significant byte with most significant byte here. So 34, 75, 56, and 88. And then I'm going to XOR them. To XOR them, I'm going to use my handy table because I really like this table. I don't need to convert that in terms of bytes and things like that. All right. So E, E8. So E and 8 is 6. C8, C8 is 4. 5, 6, 5 and 6 is 3. B5, B, and 5 is E. 5, 5 should be 0. It makes sense. 5, 7, 5, and 7 is 2. 9, 4, 9, and 4 is D. 8 and 3, uh, 8 and 3 is B. All right. So my W5 is actually BD20E346. E and we're going to do so on. We're going to do that for all the rest of them. So next we're going to plug in what? 6. 6 mod 2, 6 mod 4 is definitely not 0. It's something else. So W6 is going to be W6 minus 1, which is going to be W5 XOR with W6 minus 2, which is 4. Uh, sorry, uh, 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 6. 6 minus 1 is W5 XORing with W6 minus 2 is W2. 
and check this out w6 is being xor with w5 and w2 so we're going to do that you're going to continue doing this and then you're going to do that for 7 as well and after this whatever the answer you will get for w4 w5 w6 and w7 those are going to be the value so starting from w4 we're going to pick up these values like this 8955b5 c6 so let me write this down so let me so after you do the same process you will get w6 w7 and 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 what will be the round key let me break this uh, down and let me give you final thoughts in my next video.